Hi everybody. Well, I just want to kind of show you where we are right now and why you're not going to see any videos on the bench for a little while. Uh, looking down here, I'm just using my portable camera and you can see how much stuff is here right now. And the main reason for this is there is some pretty major <laughs> renovation going on down here uh, on the back part of our basement. And a lot of the things that I had stored over there had to be temporarily moved over here so the construction workers can do their thing. In addition, we've not been, at, Dave and I have not been able to connect up here in the last couple months. So a lot of the things that he was going to pick up, you know, and we were going to sell or whatever, or he was going to return to his collection, they're still sitting here from previous projects. So between those two things, I'm really overloaded right now, and I really can't work on this until things get back to normal down here. So I'm going to do something really fun today, and it's not something I expected to actually make a video of, but it was so interesting, I thought maybe you would like it. And it's going to be upstairs on my computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you a conversation that I had with ChatGPT. And it was concerning how the Morse code works. It all started with me being in the shower one day, <laughs> uh, the other day, how a lot of these crazy thoughts come into my head. And it kind of give you an idea of where my mind is all the time. And I, it, it had dawned on me that it, on the surface, if you look at Morse code, you have two combinations, dit and da. And in the binary numbering system, you have two combinations, one and zero. However, if, it, if you're looking at a one character word, for instance, in numbering, in the binary system, you would have one or zero. So you have two combinations, correct? And in Morse code, same thing. You have dit or you have daw. Where it gets interesting is when you get to a two number or more combination word. So for when you're talking about the binary numbering system, you have one, zero, zero, one, and one, zero. So you have a total of four numbers that you can have in a two character binary number. But when you talk about Morse code, there are six. You can have dit, daw, dit, daw, dit, dit, daw, dit, and daw, daw. <laughs> That's six. How is that possible when you only have two combinations? And really what it comes out to when you think about it, think it the whole way through, the way to think of the numbering system for if you want to convert Morse code combinations to numbers is it's actually a base three number where you omit any number that contains a zero, if that makes sense. So a dit is not the same as a zero because dit dit, okay, is separate from dit, but zero zero is not different from zero. Does that make sense? So anyway, I thought it would be interesting to ask ChatGPT about this. And what I was really looking for was, can ChatGPT make a mathematical expression that would determine by how many characters long a Morse code word is, you know, the maximum one, let's say. So let's say I have a maximum of five characters, right? Because that's what Morse code mostly is. It goes from a one character to a five character word you know, with combinations of dits and dots, is there a mathematical expression that will, that I could make, or that it could make, that you could punch in, you know, maximum of five characters? That means there's a total combinations of dits and dots of this many. Way do you see how big of a rabbit hole I sent chat GBT, chat GPT down? Okay, let's start. So I said, the binary numbering system has two numbers for each position, 0 and 1. In a similar manner, Morse code has only two states per position, dit and da. In a one-character expression, both have two possibilities. But in a two-character expression, binary has four possibilities, while Morse code has six. 
Morse code acts as a base 3 numbering system with the condition of all expressions containing a zero being omitted. At least that's what I came up with in my convoluted mind. How can this be shown as a mathematical expression? So it goes on and, you know, pumps sunshine up my butt here. Your observation is insightful. And it goes on and you can see how it tries to figure this out. So first thing it says, each position can take on two values, 0 or 1, for base 2. And it says the number of possibilities for n positions is 2 to the n. Then it says each position for Morse code, and just keep, I'm just going to read this, can take on three values, nothing, which is omitted, they're going to call it, dit or da. So, so far I'm following it. However, expressions containing all omissions are excluded, and this is where it gets confusing, okay? It should say containing any omissions. And this is where it starts going down the rabbit hole. So if Morse code were a base 3 system, the total combinations for n positions would be 3 to the n. But since the combination where all positions are omitted is excluded, we subtract 1. So it comes up with 3 to the n minus 1. And then it gives you an example, and you can see how it shows that it says that for two positions, after I just said in a two position there are six, it contradicts me and says that there's eight. See that? So already we're starting to get kind of lost here. And it says, you could say that Morse code is, restrict, is a restricted base three system where the zero state, all omitted positions, is disallowed. Would you like help expanding this? And I'm like, nope, just wanted to verify I was on the right track. <laughs> it says, you're on the right track, okay? So it goes on and on. So then I come back and I say, so a three position word would have 26 combinations in Morse code. And it says, let's calculate it. And it comes up with 26. I said, can, and here's where it gets interesting. I say, can you list all combinations using a, you know, a dot for a dit and a dash for a daw. And it said, certainly, here's the combinations. Well, as you can see, it goes through here, and it comes up with six, with comes, gets up to 15, and it knows that something's not right. So it starts over again. Here's the full list of 26 combinations, systematically arranged. And remember, it spit all this out as one long thing. And it starts listing them again, and it comes up to 13. And it says, and, and I say, well, you're only listing 13 combinations, and some of those are repeats. And it says, you're absolutely correct. My attempt was incomplete. So then it goes through, and it says, full list of 26, and it only lists 14. <laughs> And it says, combining smaller configurations, but making sure no cases repeat. And it says, let me try again. And I didn't even say anything. It knew. It screwed the pooch on this one. So it goes through again, and it tries again. And then it gets down to 17, and it says, full listings not wrapping categories will explore. You can see now it's starting to get confused. And you can see it's starting to put spaces in between them. See right there? So then it says, let me restart, <laughs> do over. And then it goes, and it gets up to 15, and it's still wrong. And it says, I see I've struggled to present this correctly, so let me methodically list all 26 combinations. So it tries again, and it gets to 18, and it stops. And it says, some corrections ongoing, shouldn't verify. <laughs> and it says, let me carefully and definitively provide the correct 26 combinations. <laughs> and it tries again. And this time, it goes up to 26, but you, if you notice the list here, I'll start up here, there's number one. You can, you can pause the video to look through them all. But it's very clear that it has no clue. And you can see where it's basically making things up now. It's spacing them out, and it's doing, you know, see how it's showing it three dits together. Then down here, it's 
shows the three dits, but it spaces them out. And then I'm like, you still have repeats. And it says, you're absolutely correct again. And it tries again. And it does the same thing again. And it says, now we finally have the correct list. And I'm like, still wrong. There are repeats. It seems as if the expression 3 to the n minus 1 isn't true. <laughs> and it says, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so you can read what it says. It's kind of funny. So then I go down and it, try, it tries again. And this would indeed result in 3 to the n equals 27. So it tries to list it again. And you can see now what it's doing. It still keeps giving these, this is actually five characters if you count the spaces in between. So it's not even, you see what I'm saying? It's getting really hung up on all this. If you still find duplicates, then the assumption 3 to n minus 1 needs rethinking. Would you like me to reevaluate? I'm like, you really need to reevaluate. <laughs> it says you're absolutely correct. So then it goes up and it says, each position can independently be one of three states, dit or da, or omitted empty. And it goes through and it does, there are 3 to the 3 equals 27. However, we exclude the single invalid case where all positions are empty. See, it's still back to that single. It can't differentiate between, you know, omitting one, you know, one case of all zeros or any case of zeros. That's where it's getting confused. You can see. So then... I come back here and it tries it again. And it's trying to think its way through there. And then it goes back here. And it says, if we systematically verify these, there should be exactly 26. And it just keeps hanging on this, right? And I said, this is totally not correct. So here I give it a little clue. I say, try listing every combination of dit and da and nothing else. Start with a one-character word, then a two-character word, then a three-character word. After you do that, count the total number of unique words you have created. And it comes through and it pumps more sunshine up my butt. And it starts. Step one, one character, dit and da. Step two, dit dit, dit da, da dit, da da. Then three character words, did it it, and so forth. Then it goes and says total number of words, one character words, two, two character words, four, three character words, eight. And it says grand total, two plus four plus eight equals 14. There we go. We finally figured it out, right? Correct conclusion. A three position Morris word has 14 combinations, not 26. Thank you for catching and guiding me. And I, says, I said, so now write this as a math expression. Of course, I misspelled math. That can be used for any maximum amount. Call it x of characters. Okay, so then it gives you its little answer, and it goes through its process. So, and then it does this crazy... <laughs> It's really going nuts right now, okay? And it comes up with two times the sum or, or the quantity 2x, 2 to the x minus 1. All right? So, final formula it is this 2 times the quantity 2 to the x minus 1. I said, so using this formula, if there are a maximum of three characters, you would have 10 possibilities. But you proved that there were 14. <laughs> and it says, you're absolutely right again. And it goes on and on. And it goes back to all of this again. And it's just getting totally lost. You can see.
So now I say, can you show this for a maximum four character word and prove it? Okay. And then I tell it, so it's finally picking up on this. Two to the x plus one minus two is the expression. And it says, so there should be 30 unique Morse code words for a maximum of four characters. And then it go, and then I told it to prove it. So it, using my method, I showed it. And it counts them all up. And it adds up, and it's 30. So... <laughs> There you have it. Um, and I say, yay, success. So you can see, and, and the reason I thought this was interesting was the one strength that these AI engines tend to have is math, you know, hardcore math. But this just shows a very simple concept can really throw these things off big time if you don't walk it through the process. And again, by no means am I a mathematician. I am horrible at math. Um, full disclosure, in high school, I didn't really take a lot of advanced math. I didn't go beyond algebra. And then when I went to college, it caused me a lot of grief. And I had to go back in the summer semester, and I had to take all of these high school level math classes and study really hard over a period of 15 weeks. And then I had to go back <laughs> and retake the advanced math and then into the calculus and so forth so that I could get my degree, and it was very difficult. I paid a price for being lazy in high school. And so I'm not a mathematician, you know. I can get by, I can do, I, ha I know what I need to know for my career, but I'm not a mathematician. And a lot of times, just like a lot of you who may not be a mathematician, you rely on these types of tools to show you things, but this proves that you have to really think for yourself. Don't rely on a computer to tell you everything. And I know that sounds cliche, and it sounds like I'm an old man complaining about technology, but I'm not. I embrace technology. I've spent my whole life and the 36 years of my career embracing technology. But I also, from my experience, know its limitations, and this is it. So did we arrive at something that would work? Yeah. But <laughs> just be, proceed with caution is all I'm going to say. But this was an interesting exercise. And uh, it all started with me thinking of something in the shower in the morning. <laughs> well, everybody, I'll be back as soon as I can when all the construction and all the mess of the basement and everything gets cleared up. And I'll do some other little videos like this, you know, here and there along the way. But until then, I ask your patience on this. And I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. And as this is probably the first video of the new year, I'm going to wish you all once again a really happy, prosperous new year. Take care, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.